Here now is Faith to Live By with Pastor Barber. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 42, Jesus, when he was preparing his disciples for him to be so, so soon taken to the cross, he said, be on the alert for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. And the entire movement of the New Testament is in eager anticipation to the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glad day. Here is the men's quartet to sing, We'll Soon Be Done. One of these days I'm going home Where no sorrows ever come We'll soon be done We'll soon be done Troubles and trials, troubles and trials, safe from heartaches, pain and care. We shall all that glory share. And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the Side. And I'm a gonna shake that hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while. Kindred and friends now wait for me, soon their faces I shall see. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials, troubles and trials, tears of home. And we'll all be gathered there And I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while We'll soon be done We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Troubles and trials in that home Yes, in that home on the other side On the other side And I'm gonna shake glad hands with the elders Lord, and tell my kindred good morning Then I'm gonna sit down beside my Jesus Lord, I'm gonna sit down and rest a little while I shall behold His blessed face I shall feel His matchless grace We'll soon be done We'll soon be done with troubles and trials Troubles and trials Oh, what peace and joy sublime In that home of love Sit down beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done, we'll soon be done with troubles and trials, troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side, on the other side, and I'm going to shake glad hands with the elders, Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm going to sit down beside my Jesus. Lord, I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. We'll soon be done. We'll soon be done with troubles and trials. Troubles and trials in that home. Yes, in that home on the other side. On the other side. And I'm going to shake that hands with the elders. Lord, and tell my kindred good morning. Then I'm going to sit down. Beside my Jesus, Lord, I'm going to sit down and rest a little while. The Bible has the answer. You have provided the questions, and we search the scriptures, God's holy word, in order to find the answers. Question number one Was Simon the leper ever healed of his leprosy? We meet up with Simon the leper on, in various portions of the Gospels. Let me direct your attention to Matthew chapter 26 and verses 6 to 13. Here we read, 
Now when Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, and then it goes on to describe, a woman came to him with an alabaster vial of very costly perfume, and that perfume was poured upon our Lord and Savior. This is the S Simon the leper who is referred to. Let me also direct you to Luke chapter 17 and verses 11 to 13. Here we have 10 lepers as Jesus was passing between Samaria and Galilee. There were 10 leprous men who stood at a distance who met him and they raised their voices saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. The reason why these 10 stood at a distance was because in obedience to the Mosaic law, they were outcasts. They were to keep their distance. They were to cry out wherever they went, unclean, 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 that no one might draw near to them, uh, not understanding the condition which was upon these men. And so there was at this time most certainly the practice of that custom, the fear of leprosy. And so the question comes, was Simon also a leper who Jesus and his disciples should have drawn away from? One more passage, and it's also in Matthew chapter 8 and verses 2 to 4. A leper came to Jesus and bowed down before him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus does the unthinkable in terms of the religious Jew. It says, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him. Jesus touched the leper and he said, I am willing be cleansed. Immediately, the man's leprosy was cleansed so that Jesus, uh, it, this put the religious leadership in a real quandary. Well, did Jesus touch the leper or not? Because when Jesus touched him, all of a sudden the leprosy was cleansed. Coming back to Simon the leper, with all of this as background, understanding what the expectation was, what the power of God was demonstrated in various scenes here throughout the Gospels, most, sure, uh, most assuredly, Simon was no longer a leper. However, the designation Simon the leper was a carryover from previous in his life when he was under that horrible condition and it just stuck. People, they yet put that designation to him saying, you know Simon, well, which Simon are you talking about? Simon the leper, the one who used to be, but that Jesus was in his home and that his disciples, we remember that the disciples were not always of the same mind as Jesus on various points. And so not only that Jesus was there, but that the disciples were there and that there was a gathering of other people, it, without mistake, without, without uh, doubt, there is this, that Simon was previously a leper the name stuck, but that he was a leper no longer, that he had been cleansed of his leprosy. Question number two, does the promise of Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 refer to the rapture? Here we are in the letters which Jesus gave to John at the outset of Revelation in order to send to the churches of the apocalypse and here in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10, we are particularly looking at the, at the letter which, or the message which was sent to the church at Philadelphia, the angel of the church to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. And verse 10 says, because you have kept the word of my perseverance, Jesus speaking here, because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I will also keep you from the hour of testing, that hour which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. The rapture takes place prior to the tribulation, 
And so, yes, I believe that here is an allusion, a reference to the rapture that would take place. However, I would not confine it only to this one portion. In John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus speaking to his disciples, preparing them for his departure, he said, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Jesus plants in the heart of his disciples as it should be for each and every one of us that greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. Greater is the Lord whom we serve than the master of this fallen world. Jesus also, the final words of Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 to 20, Jesus said in verse 18, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Then 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 18 also follows along speaking of the rapture and the conclusion that Paul gives to us is, therefore, comfort one another with these words. Coming back to Rome, Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10, Jesus here is speaking to the saints, to the believers in Philadelphia, and these churches, these Christians, they endured incredible turmoil. There were great times of testing. But Jesus said to them, because you have kept the word of my perseverance, I will also keep you. You have kept my word. I will be the one who will hold you. I will the, be the one who will cherish you. Now, does that mean that a true believer never has to go through times of trial or tribulation? Hear this, Jesus holds us, he grips us, and he holds us in the good days when we evermore rejoice in him and when we say, Lord, it's so good to be a Christian. I don't understand why anybody would not want to follow you. And he holds us also in those times when we are sorely test and when the heat of the furnace is right there. He keeps us in those times of testing and trial. And so, dear friend, Jesus, he will keep you. But most especially in that time of horrific pouring, outpouring of the wrath of God in the tribulation that is to come, that is something that the Lord says, I will keep you from that. That will not be for you. That wrath that is poured out upon this world that is not for you, dear child of God. Thank you for these questions. If you have a question, send it to us. Our mailing address at The Bible Has the Answer is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Terry and Tim Sturby team up to sing The King and I.
I'm very pleased to announce to you a brand new CD sitting at the feet of Jesus. This CD is providing all of the music which you are enjoying on today's broadcast. 14 songs. Many of you have written to us telling us how much you enjoy the music of Faith to Live By, and particularly you ask for the male quartet to be featured more often. Sometimes that has been difficult for the male quartet to gather together because of work schedules or during the pandemic it was especially difficult, but now we have released this CD, 14 songs, and so many of them, the entire quartet joining together as well as the men teaming up in duets as well as in solo work. Ask for your free copy of Sitting at the Feet of Jesus. We're always glad to see these put into your hands and be a blessing. It is sent free and postage paid with no obligation whatsoever. Ask for your copy when you write this week to Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. Also, our toll-free phone number, 1-833-367-3852. Three eight five two is another means of you contacting us, or our website, faith to live by .ca. Now we have Rick Bowring singing a song which is included on this CD, softly and tenderly. The book of Acts combines together two great loves which I have, the love of history as well 
as the love of traveling, of finding and seeing new places. Here, Luke, the beloved physician, takes us by the hand, having completed his gospel account, he now takes us the next step into the spread of the gospel message in the Mediterranean world and beyond, how that lives were transformed by the power of God. But it was not in human ingenuity that this transformation or that this power emanated. It was by the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit who brought Jesus into the world, that conceived the Son of God within the virgin womb of Mary, and that worked such wonders. Here the Spirit of the living God, exalting Jesus Christ repeatedly, unceasingly, without fail. Luke tells us this glorious story and acts how thankful we are that the Lord has given us this book to understand how that at the cross it was not the end, nor was it at the end at the tomb or the resurrection or the ascension that things petered out. Rather, the message starts spreading and lives are changed, lives are unmistakably transformed. This is what we read. The first account I, Dr. Luke, composed, and he is writing this to a man named Theophilus, about all that Jesus began to do and teach. Now Luke is going to take us and tell us what Jesus, through the Spirit and through his emissaries, the apostles, through preachers and believers, what he would continue to do until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after he had, by the Holy Spirit, given orders to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he, Jesus, also presented himself alive after his suffering by many convincing proofs. There was no doubt in their mind that Jesus indeed was alive. They had seen him appearing to them over a period of 40 days and speaking of the things concerning the kingdom of God. They didn't talk about the weather. They didn't talk about the price of bread or cheese. Those were unimportant things. They were talking about things concerning the kingdom of God and how that Christ had left the glories of heaven to come into this world in order that men and women might know the forgiveness of sins. Oh, what glorious news it was. Earlier, before Jesus had gone to the cross, we find the disciples even right up to the very end, bickering and debating, focusing upon lesser things. Now that they had seen Jesus die and rise once again, there is a change that has taken place. And he speaks to them about the kingdom of God he gathers them together, and he commands them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise, which, he said, you heard of from me. For John, John the Baptist, down at the Jordan River, had baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And when they had come together, they did have this question, Lord, is it at this time that you are restoring the kingdom to Israel. You're talking about the kingdom of God. What about the kingdom of Israel? And Jesus said to them, I have a bigger work for you to do. It's not for you to know the times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, that which he has put in place, that which he has cemented in place things which are most assuredly to take place on the timetable of God's choosing. But, but, you will receive power. There will be a quickening in your spirit, and you won't be fishermen anymore, and you won't be tax collectors anymore. There will be something that will energize you, and the words that you speak, they will come with power. 
with great power. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. The word in Greek is martus, from which we get martyr. So many of these men, they would go to their death because of their witness of the cross. And Jesus says, you'll witness in Jerusalem and in Judea, in Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth, the remotest part of the earth. Glorious news. These men had something worth talking about. They had the kingdom of God. They had seen the works of God, and they rejoiced in them. Oh, I would invite you also to come and to rejoice in the great things that God has done and to bear witness wherever you are of the great things that God has done and let the spirit of the living God transform you by the power of God today. There's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross. Thank you for joining Pastor Barber today. Please watch for Faith to Live By again next Sunday at this same time on this same station. Until then, Faith to Live By prays that the peace of God will fill your heart and that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Pastor Barber would love to hear from you. The mailing address is Faith to Live By, Box 426, Winnipeg, Manitoba, R3C2H6. 